it's always interesting when you speak to people uh, of faith, right, that there isn't one model. There isn't one model of faith. There isn't one way of living the faith. When you, like when you meet different people, when you see different people, when you're talking to different people, when you're in contact with different people via email or social media or all these Zoom chats now that we're all part of, and you meet different people or, look, there was a life before lockdown, there'll be a life after it. People that we've met uh, on pilgrimage and the different way that, that they live their faith. There isn't one model. There isn't one way of doing this. So I think when it comes to uh, how people view people of faith, they think, well, they have to be shock and holy and really boring. You know, if you're prayerful, like, it, does, it means you're boring. It means um, you like tweed and you probably have elbow patches and you like reruns of Coronation Street and just, you know, no sense of fun or life or joy or anything like that. It's just, you know, just boring. We just kind of drag ourselves through life and then we die and meet God. You know, and I think we, we, when you meet people of faith, when you meet uh, people who love the Lord, you see, it, that's, that's not it. That's not the way the faith is at all. When you see people who, who live the faith, there isn't one model. There can be so many different ways of doing it. And the Lord himself is actually, I don't want to say unpredictable. He's unpredictable in some ways. What he said here, the centurion comes to him and pleads with him and says, you know, come and heal my, my servant who's paralyzed and in great pain. Now keep in mind, centurion, right? Roman, foreigner, and part of a, an occupying force, okay? Not a member of Israel, not a Jew. So this foreigner comes. That's why this reading is important. Um, we, we might notice those kind of political details. Uh, but like, yeah, I don't want to maybe offend people. Like, but like, it's like back in the day, you know, in Ireland, a red coat. Okay? That's how politically incorrect this was. You know, like a, a soldier from an occupying force. Okay? So then... Uh, he says, look, Lord, I'm not worried to have you under my roof. Just give the word, my servant will be healed. Jesus says, nowhere in Israel have I found faith like this. Right? Nowhere, nowhere amongst the Jews have I found faith like this. Like this foreigner has. You know what I mean? So this, this gospel, it's, it's much more poignant than it seems. He's not just commending the man on being, on being faithful. This man wasn't a Jew. Okay, and has this great faith in the Lord. And I tell you, the many will come from east and west to take their places. That's, that's east and west. That's non-Jews to take their place at the table with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. So non-Jews, Gentiles, will enter heaven, he's saying. Again, this is a huge statement. I mean, at the time, they thought like the eternal life was pretty much reserved for Jews. So these are important statements. And the reason I say that is because Jesus isn't just, he's not so just predictable. Right? Following the Lord is, is an incredible adventure. Someone asked me there yesterday, um, do I, do I, would I miss not getting, do I miss not having a family of my own or getting married? And I said, not even a little. Nope. <laughs> nope. Um, yeah, I thought there, was, there were certain occasions, maybe when I was in seminary, and I went to visit a family in Switzerland. And Switzerland is just such a beautiful country. So they were friends of, of, of our community. So we stayed with them for, 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 I don't know what it was, two weeks over the summer. And like, you know, it's the middle of summer, but some of the mountains are still snow capped. It's, you know, these mountain lakes and green flowing hills everywhere. Just stunning country. And I remember in that moment thinking, it would be kind of nice to have someone to share this with, you know. But uh, it's just me and my brother <laughs> from Germany. Okay, so, uh, and I remember just thinking, yeah, this whole celibacy thing could be kind of difficult. Uh, but, bless Looking back on it now, like to have to trade this priesthood, not a hope, not a hope, never, nope, not even the least bit tempted, if I'm honest. No offense to you, like you're all wonderful people, and, <laughs> and that was, no, I'm grand. Um, and that's why, like, and it's another way, like, another kind of a proof, like that 
that God's ways are so kind of unpredictable. Because I wouldn't, I would not, I would not have predicted this in my late teens. Like that, that priesthood could actually satisfy me. That's unpredictable. That would have been unpredictable for me. Uh, I had other plans, and uh, most of them involved, yeah, having a family, getting married, eventually. So uh, God's ways are are somewhat unpredictable. Okay, but they are never unreasonable. Unpredictable sometimes. Unreasonable. Never. Never. Like the Lord doesn't ask us to do things that are just completely off the wall wacky. You know? Uh, that, that's kind of for another homily maybe about how, how, to, how to effectively discern. We'll do that some other time. It'll take too long today. But just I, just, I love the idea that when it comes to, to following the Lord, it's not boring. It's not predictable. And God himself is not boring and is anything but predictable. But what he asks us to do, his will, it works. It works. And it leads to true joy. It leads to true happiness and true fulfillment. And like we were saying yesterday, we see life kind of like through one of those kitchen towel rolls. You know, we just see a little portion of life at the time. We don't see the big picture. But we can be very, very focused on what we do see, this, this, what's immediately in front of us. You know, the next exam, the next conversation, the next problem. Or the you know like the, the the issues I have at the moment and there that's it that's my world do you know someone someone <laughs> we Irish people like you're driving on the road someone blows the horn and that's you come home that's all you think about I, mean, I must be a bad person I mean someone blew the horn at me and then you're kind of looking around to say um hi uh, uh, Dominic am I am I a bad person am I just just am I, you know and you're kind of like, almost looking for affirmation because you know. This is the problem. This becomes my entire focus. And we forget the whole massive, big picture that God has in mind for us. And we're just so focused on the small things, small details right in front of our eyes. So God has all of this in mind. So here he guides us then, maybe entirely unpredictable in our eyes, but never unreasonable. The, the story always makes sense, especially in hindsight. You look back and you go, my goodness, how on earth did I get here? If this, I, I would never have planned, I couldn't have planned to be here because I'd never have known that this friendship or this relationship or this thing would lead to all of these other possibilities. And yet here we are. In hindsight, you just look back and it's, it's, it's phenomenal how God guides things. So following the Lord, the Lord's will, predictable sometimes, unreasonable never. So in this time of Advent, Let's rediscover that docility to the Lord's will. That obedience to his direction. This plan that he sees, this plan that he knows we're capable of, that we don't see now. And maybe we're not capable of seeing at the moment. But step by step, one day at a time, he guides us to where we're, we're supposed to be. And the journey is important. Each step is important. Every day we're learning. Every day we're growing. Every day we're hopefully getting stronger, more capable then of doing these great things that he's calling us to do. God's will is unpredictable sometimes, but it's never unreasonable. So then at the end of this year, at the end of next year, five years' time, we look back and we go, my goodness, thank you, Lord, for getting me here that now I'm married to this incredible person or I have these beautiful children or the mission is going or developing, whatever it may be. We look back and we just see how blessed we've been. And may in this season of Advent, we walk every day with our Blessed Lady in expectation of the coming of the light of the world into the crib and into our own hearts. Amen.